Let's return to This Week in America. Here's your host, Rick Bratton. Welcome back, everybody, Coast to Coast, This Week in America. Wolf Creek by William Pardue is his true life story of survival in the wilderness while surrounded by 10 emotionally disturbed delinquent adolescents who were trying to either kill him or run him off before accepting him as their leader. In 1971, William graduated from college, took a job as a wilderness counselor for delinquent teenage boys, including killers, sociopaths, psychopaths, gang members, and victims of childhood violence. The counselor's job was to tame, contain, and ultimately bring this wild group of boys together as a family. This is a story of love, overcoming hatred and violence, the story of a family building a new home in the piney forest of East Texas, miles from any local communities, on the ashes of poverty, domestic violence, and emotional turmoil, a liberating and inspirational story. For William, that experience during this year of wilderness camping shaped his entire future. Now 67 years old and has, with the help of his son Patrick, written a novel about his experiences with these boys. He is currently an attorney in Northern California. He's had previous careers as a social worker and a building contractor. Written two other books, Why God and Visionary Perspectives Reincarnated. Patrick Pardue, as an inspiring writer, dreams to open minds and change hearts for the better with his work in nonfiction and philosophy, to have a positive impact on the turbulent, rapidly changing world which humans face in the 21st century. William Pardue, author of Wolf Creek, and Patrick Pardue, editor of Wolf Creek, joining us on This Week in America. Gentlemen, welcome to the program. It's great to have you with us. It's good to be here. Thanks for having us. It is a pleasure. You've done such an in- interesting job with this. It's a great read and a lot of messages in this book as well. The book is Wolf Creek. You'll find it at Amazon, all the usual places. William, I'll start with you. I gave a brief description of who you are, but you're much more than that. It's such a fascinating background that you've had and continue to have. Who exactly are you? Give us a little bit of your background. Um. Well, now I'm an attorney. I've been an attorney for 28 years. This is, I practice family law. So I do, I deal with a lot of um, families that are in um, distress, which is kind of a carryover from my days yes. uh, with the boys out in the campground. Uh, prior to that, I did, uh, just because I wanted to work for myself for a while, I worked as a contractor for 10 years, ran my own business. I went to school at night to go to law school at night to become an attorney once my first son was born i thought i'd better do something other than build houses and surf <laughs> not necessarily in that order that sounds like that no, was that no, was surf, fine that was surf, a, that was a, that was a good life that you, that you were leading Ooh. and then prior to that i had a job with the american red cross this was after my time with the boys i had gotten a master's degree in social work I worked with their disaster assistance program, and they sent me all halfway around the world. I went to Central America, wrote a disaster plan for those countries down there. I went to the North Pole and uh, helped the Eskimos after a flood. Um, so they just sent me all over. Well, I mentioned you've had an interesting life, and you really have. Uh, the book is Wolf Creek, written by William Pardue, edited by his son, Patrick. Uh, before I ask Patrick about a little bit about his background, I want to talk, uh, William, about why you decided to write the book. How long? This happened a lot of years ago. Is this something that's been sort of in the back of your mind for a while to, to write this story? Yeah, I wrote a longhand version of it in, uh, I think, 1992, maybe. Um and uh, just because I didn't want to forget the story, it was just such a good story. And I originally submitted it to um, to publishers back then, or different than they are now. And they said it's a great story, but you're not much of a writer. So, <laughs> <laughs> so when when Joe was born, he graduated from uh, college with a degree in creative writing. I asked him if he would look at it for me and clean it up. That's interesting. And I mentioned uh, an aspiring writer, very impressive credentials, Patrick. Talk about your, your background and why this project was, it had to be very important to you. Here's a great story you're telling and you get to tell it with your dad. Well, yeah, it was, it was very inspirational to read the story and to see what those kids had gone through and also to get experience editing a novel, which I'd never done before and working on a novel. And so my background is I've always been a writer. 
written anything I could. Um, and this was just an opportunity to grow and to, as a young person, you know, reading this story, I also learned a lot from it. And that, cause I was close to the age of these kids who were going through this. So personally, I took lessons from that too. You know, it's interesting as you're reading this, you can relate to the kids. What they were going through opens your eyes to a whole different world out there. And you see your dad probably in a different world as well, didn't you? I mean, here here are these these young people out there uh, possibly trying to do harm to your, to your dad. What was that like as you're balancing dad's role in all of this and the role of these young people and your dad desperately trying to help them find out who they are? Well, he'd always told us stories about this experience before, and I have always known him to be somebody who helps out others. And this was just seeing that come to light, you know, and seeing the story that had been told so many times, you know, in more detail. So that was really that experience for me. And, um, you know, he was so good to the kids, and I could tell they appreciated it so much. And that was what I liked about the book, too. The book is Wolf Creek with us on the program, William Pardue, that's P-A-R-D-U-E. He is the author of the book, Patrick Pardue. His son is uh, uh, the editor on the book. You'll find it at Amazon, all the usual places. Link on to our website. You go directly to the Amazon site and get information on the book. Uh, William, let's go back to the beginning of this. How did the boys end up in the remote backwoods of East Texas? How, how did that happen? I, I'm reading this and shocked at, at what they put these young people through. How did they end up out there in, in the middle of nowhere with you? You sort of in charge of them. Yeah. So uh, most of them came from the south side of Chicago, from gang neighborhoods. Uh, the majority of them had been involved in gangs. There were some that were not from that area, but they all had the same troubled background. Most of them did not have a, uh, well, all of, none of them had stable family backgrounds. Um, so they had been rejected by the uh, Chicago juvenile authorities because they couldn't be controlled. These, you have to understand, emotionally disturbed um, children, teenagers, are just that, they are out of control. Uh, you don't know when they're gonna explode, you don't know what they're gonna do when they explode. Um, and so Chicago, the city of Chicago could not handle them. They then sent them to the state of um, Illinois system and they could not handle them, who then sent them to the boys ranch in Austin, Texas. They could not handle the boys. So their solution back in that day, this was like the first wilderness camping program it was the pilot for this whole thing. And um, they just sent us out into the woods. The kids didn't go to school, hadn't been going to school. A lot of them couldn't tell time. They couldn't read. Uh, they didn't know any math. All they could be is isolated. So they sent us out at the in 20 acres of just pine trees and nothing else. There's no running water, no electricity no shelter, all that we had to, um, we never had running water, but um, we had, we did have to build our own shelters from the native environment. We cut down pine trees, we built the beds, we built the furniture, we built the shelter. Um, and, and as a counselor, and in my particular group, each group of 10 boys had two counselors assigned to them. Uh, my counselor, uh, was a retired Vietnam vet. And of course, this was still during the Vietnam War, but he was a paratrooper. So I had a good backup. Uh, and and yes. all counselors had to always be careful about, um, about their own safety, as well as the safety of the boys. But the reason they were out there, nobody else could handle them. They just wanted them deposited in the woods. Forget about it. You guys take care of them. Do whatever you <laughs> want to do. Well, what was that like for you just out of college and you really want to do good? Here's an opportunity to do that. Yet the real world situation, I mentioned they tried to run you off. They wasn't sure that they were going to harm you or maybe even take your life. What was that like juggling the emotions? One, I really, I'm here to help and I'm going to, and then worrying about your safety as well. Well, I had grown up in some rough environments and I'd had four brothers and uh, we were fighting all the time. So I wasn't, I wasn't a, um, a foreign to fights. 
Uh, I, I, just as an example, the first day they showed up, they came out. We had an old school bus. They showed up on the school bus. They dumped them out. We happened to be at a state park at a picnic table. And the leader of the group came out off the bus first. They all sat around the picnic table. I was sitting on the end, and they were crowding me off. They <laughs> crowding me <laughs> off. The leader was sitting across the table, and we were just staring at each other. He leaned across and blew smoke in my face. I said, look, I'll give you one pass on that. Do not do it again. And I was 21 myself, so I wasn't, you know, they were 16, 17. So there were just that, not that many years between us. And the second time he did it, I jumped across the table. I grabbed him. We rolled down the hill. Uh, I finally subdued him. Now, this was the leader of the group, right? So this is like a pack of wolves getting together. This is the alpha male. Who is the, who's the alpha male going to be here? So once I subdued the leader, he said to me, you better not go to sleep tonight because I am going to kill you. Okay. I said, all right, well, <laughs> we'll see what happens. <laughs> so half an hour later or 15 minutes later, the enforcer of the group, who was the guy who really enforced things for the leader, also got into a you know, combative situation with me. Same thing, rolling down the hill. I finally subdued him. And uh, he became probably one of my best allies during that time. The, the leader was just like the, you know, wolf pack. The defeated has to kind of move off to the edges of the community. And so the enforcer became my enforcer. So he helped me to find kids that ran away, uh, discipline kids, which was which was a big help to me. So your demeanor, your attitude had everything to do, it sounds like, with them accepting you. Uh, Patrick, I'm listening to this. This sounds like a movie, too. Are you working on a, a screenplay for this? I can see this unfolding before my eyes as, as your dad is talking about it. Well, we had actually gone down to L.A. about three years ago now, and we participated in a pitch fest down there. It's called Pitch Fest. And we actually won the competition. Um, so we were trying to get it made into a movie, and we still are at this point. Well, I hope that happens. When when you were younger and your dad was telling you these stories, did you understood understand the magnitude of what was happening, or was it like, oh, dad's just telling us a story? No, uh, not at that time I didn't, but I knew who he was because I'd seen him stand up to, bully, to bullies before, um, you know, around me and in our neighborhood where we lived. So, yeah, I knew that that's what kind of person he was. But as I got older, that's when I understood the real significance of the story and the implications. William, talk about the, the, the book, by the way, is Wolf Creek, written by William Pardue. That's P-A-R-D-U-E. Patrick, his son, Patrick Pardue, is, is the editor on the book. You'll find the book at Amazon, the usual places. What was the daily routine like there? Did you have a, a, a set routine that you went through? Because I'm sure part of that was... Teaching discipline, you know, having uh, having a schedule was that was that part of uh, every every day was laid out. It was so everybody had their task. Again, we had to cook our own meals uh, over a campfire. Uh, we had to clean the campsite. We had to build things when we were building them. In the very beginning, all we had was pup tents to live in, and that probably lasted for four or five months. Uh, and then we got them organized into buildings so that we built things. They were they each had a day where they were to prepare all the meals, two of them at a time. And they understood that. In the very beginning, we had real difficulty with them because they kept running away. So it was almost every morning we woke up, somebody ran away. And because we were so far out in the wilderness, we could track them down. And we would track them down and bring them back. It took about two months for them to realize we were going to track them down and bring them back. So there was no running away. Of course, they didn't like it. They didn't have TV. They didn't have telephones. They didn't have lights. They didn't have girls. <laughs> all, all the things that teenagers well, that, like. Yes. Yes. No girls. No, no cable. This was uh, this was a difficult time for the, for the young people out there. This was this this transformation I talked about of hatred into love, desperation into hope. How did that happen? Did you see that? Did you sense you were making progress, that you were getting through, and just maybe you were going to leave there successfully? Um, yeah. I mean, it was an everyday thing, them getting to know you, you getting to know them. 
uh, them trusting you. Again, you have to understand, these boys never knew love. All they got was uh, beatings and dismissals and get out of here and, you know, foster homes. And they did not know love. So part, and, and this wasn't an intentional thing. It was just all of us as counselors gaining their trust and showing them that we love them, right? Just by taking care of them. Uh, so there was one incident where we had a, we were in Dallas at the fairgrounds and the boys were wild. So you let them off the bus, they would take off in multiple directions. We would keep tabs on them. But on this particular occasion, the boys at the end of it, a few of them had gone off on them by themselves. They came back. We had parked the bus by a railroad uh, crossing. And uh, they came running up to me and they said, we've got a problem. And I turned around and there were at least 30 uh, mostly African-American young men who had been playing basketball in the gyms. My client, my kids, had obviously gone through there and said something to them, stirred them up. So we found ourselves in the back alley between the bus and these 40 kids. They started throwing bottles and rocks and all kinds of things at us. And um, sometimes I, I don't use my brain. In that particular incident, I was the boys were behind me. They were throwing rocks at me. And I said, we need, you know, I didn't even say anything. I was just emotional about it because I don't like bullies. So I picked up a rock. I ran directly towards them as fast as I could. I threw the rock right at them and the boys were coming behind me and they all spread. Now, after that time, they knew that I had their back. They knew that I cared about them. I didn't want them to get hurt. I understood where they were coming from. And I had had, you know, some of the same uh, experiences as a youth that they had. So I um, and at the end of the day, they taught me more than I ever taught them. A couple minutes left in the program. Obviously, you got to the point where you felt you were getting through to them and they made an impact on you to this day. What impact do you do you think that uh, that you made on them? What were the results when this when, how long were you out in, in the wilderness with them? A year. A year. Wow. What impact did you have on them, do you think? Well, let me just tell you one example. On, a, on a Christmas, we I brought them to my parents' home. And my parents were not wealthy. They were probably lower middle class. And I have pictures of my mother sitting and talking with them and sewing things on their clothes. And one of them sitting in my father's lap and and I think that just kind of summarizes. They got to see what the love in a family feels like. Yes. And to be accepted. And, and that's what it was all about. That's what changed them. Wolf Creek is the name of the book written by William Pardue, edited by his son, Patrick Pardue. Patrick, I mentioned uh, a writer you are as well. What, what are you working on? You have to get great inspiration from your, from your dad, not only in, uh, in real life and what he's been able to do in touching the lives of so many people, but, uh, but from a writing standpoint as well. What are you working on now? Uh, what I'm working on currently at the moment is uh, philosophy, actually. Um, I, you know, I kind of write anything that I want to, but particularly at the moment, I'm focusing more on philosophical work, trying to submit articles to journals, and get those published. But I, you know, I also switch back and forth between different projects. So what has this been like working on Wolf Creek with your dad, being there with the encouragement to do this, working obviously side by side as you try to get this into uh, d developed into a, a movie of some kind. What's this been like working with dad on this? It's been great working by him, working with him and uh, getting to learn more about him through the process and through the story itself and yeah, just getting and getting to learn about the kids and strengthening our relationship too, by working together on this. William, as you look back on this, this has to be a source of great pride, probably at in the early stages of that year, you weren't sure if this was the right career move, but when looking back on it now, you have to feel really good because you've shaped some lives along the, the way, haven't you? I like to think I have. Yeah. It, I, I at least introduced some love into their lives yes. for that year so that they now know what it looks like. And they, 
Some of them were um, corresponding with me after that, after I left. Well, you, you definitely had an impact. I, I mentioned a couple of other books that you've written. What are you working on now? Are you working on another book? Well, I just published, I, I published one last year, which is the um, a Mystic's Guide to Spiritual Evolution. Ooh, I'd love to talk about that sometime. That sounds, uh, that sounds fascinating as well. It's just, uh, the time has gone by so quickly. It's such a fascinating story, what you did and how you were able uh, in the wilderness to take these lives and, and to make a, a difference and where, where you got to from where you started. As I mentioned, the beginning days out there, I don't think anybody, including you, knew what to, what to expect during that time out there. It's just such an amazing story, and I hope it is made into a, into a movie. It's Wolf Creek by William Pardue, P-A-R-D-U-E. Editor is his son, Patrick Pardue. Well, you'll find information at Amazon, all of the usual places. Gentlemen, thank you for being with us on the program. You've got a lot going on. Hopefully, we can get you back and talk some more about some of the other projects you've got going. Thank you for being with us on the program today. Thank you, sir. Thanks we for appreciate us. it. We appreciate it. It has been a pleasure. Wolf Creek, William Pardue, edited by Patrick Pardue. You'll find the book at Amazon, the usual places. Link onto their Amazon site by going to our website, thisweekinamerica.us. Back on today's program after these messages. This Week in America is online. You can visit our website, thisweekinamerica.us. Scott Pinkerton, associate producer of This Week in America. Jay Anderson, segment producer. Ben Watson, webmaster. Otto Bache, director of engineering and TV production. This Week in America produced and is a trademark of Blue Funk Broadcasting, LLC. For information on all of our guests and to listen to this week's show, our website again at thisweekinamerica.us. And I'm Sean Bratton, executive producer of This Week in America.